Hello again and welcome. In this video I just want to run a quick experiment. This is in response to a Jerry Becker. Sorry if I've screwed up your name. He's a recent member up on EEV blog. So one of his posts up on the forum was the UT61E Plus is the only multimeter with a classic shunt wire that even when overheated still has the same reading no matter the shunt temperature. I have overloaded the multimeter and the measurement was absolutely correct. Any other multimeters begin showing more and more until you get like 12 amps on the display while just 10 amps is passing through the multimeter. Usually shunt wire gets hot at nominal current, begins to expand its length and increases resistance, so also increasing burden voltage causing bad reading. So this is going to be our test setup. I have my bench power supply. I have a Bryman BM869S looking across that power supply. And I have a second BM869S that's sitting across the shunt. And then that's in series with the BM789 and the UT61E+. So on the left is the BM789. Here's the Unity UT61E+. And then my two Bryman BM869S's. The one on the left is looking at the voltage that's being supplied to this. And that is attached right to the shunt. And the other line attaches to this lead of the meter. Of course these leads are going to get warm and also affect this measurement. So that's why I'm trying to measure the voltage closer to the circuit that we're actually trying to evaluate. This is the shunt that we're going to be using. This is an old Weston 50 amp shunt. So at 50 amps you'll get 50 millivolts out of it. And you can see I also have my Fluke 187 out. I'm going to use this just to look at the burden voltage of these two meters real quickly. I believe that these both have the same value as shunt. Let's just go ahead and we'll apply a little bit of current through them. So it looks like our BM789 is reading roughly 27 millivolts. And our UT61E Plus is about 23 or so millivolts. So very similar shunt between the two. One of the things I should mention that I did point out in the forums is that it's very possible that the other meters that he was looking at and comparing against the UT61E may have had a higher resolution like this Bryman BM789. So it's very possible that the Unity may not have the resolution to detect any kind of drift where a better meter like this 789 would. Hopefully that's obvious. Let's go ahead and turn on our power supply. And what do we get here? So we'll call this 6.087 and 361.2 and 6.071 and 6.0623. This is kind of our starting point. All right, so you can see we're at about 10 minutes after right now. Again, we'll just let this set for, I don't know, 10 minutes or something. And let's just see how these drift. Alright, it's probably been roughly 10 minutes. Let's see what we got here. So first of all, if we look at the Bryman BM869S along with our current shunt, it's gone from 6.087 to 6.088 amps. So basically it's gone up one count. If we look at the voltage across the system, of course that's gone up just a little bit as well. It's gone from 361 to 365 millivolts. Again, this is looking essentially at the output of the power supply. Now let's look at the Unity UT61E+. Plus. We've gone from 6.071 to 6.081 amps for a difference of roughly 10 milliamps. Or roughly 10 times higher than what we're measuring with our Bryman along with our external shunt. Let's have a look at the 789. You can see again it's gone from 6.0623 to 6.0641 for a difference of roughly 1.8 milliamps so about two times higher than what we saw with the shunt again we're right down in the noise with this though so you can see this guy bouncing around a couple of counts but surely this UT61E is by far the worst out of this hopefully I've shown that the UT61E plus 
isn't the perfect zero drift meter that was mentioned in the forums. Well, that's going to be it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed the demonstration. Hope to see you in the next video. Later.